In this tutorial video, I want to create this simple rug design and in doing so, review a lot of the topics that we've already gone over and put it into some practical use. So what we're going to be doing is working in an architectural scale and working with an object that's about 8 feet by 12 feet. So I'm just going to construct this off to the side here. So I'm going to go to the Home tab and start with a polyline. I'll use the polyline and create a horizontal line that's 8 feet and a vertical that's 12. Back again 8 feet and then I'll do C for close. Once I have this basic exterior rectangle done, I can use offset to do the one that's actually inside like we see over here. So I'll use offset that's on the home tab under the modify panel. And then we'll see in the command line it's asking me the distance. I would like to do 12 inches or one foot, so I'll type in 12, enter. And then I will actually select this rectangle and I could either go inside or outside at this point. So I'll click inside. And this worked out really nicely because I did it with a polyline instead of individual lines. Once we have this offset, we can create the X and then the cross that's going through the middle here. So I'll use a regular line. And with object snaps on, I'm snapping from one corner to the next. Hit enter to end the command hit enter again or the spacebar to restart the line command. It's important at this point that you don't trace over these lines or you'll get um, a messy drawing and we don't want that. Then I'll connect the midpoint at the top to the bottom and then left to right. Okay, so once we have um, the basic grid set up, if you will, we can come in with some circles. I'll do the center radius circle and I will start perhaps at this corner. So I'm just going to snap to this basically group of endpoints here and pull my mouse out and I will do a radius of four inches. I could actually go through and just draw those over and over again if I wanted to, but I could actually just use the copy command from the modify panel, select the circle, Hit enter the space bar. I will pick my base point as the center and then I will just click it in the alternative locations that I want it to exist in. Once I have them all I can just hit enter to end that command. Now that we have the circles we could put in the ellipse that goes horizontal and then the one that goes vertical. So I'll come to the home tab in the draw panel and I'll pick the center ellipse. I will pick this midpoint here right in the middle of my rug, pull my mouse out and snap to this endpoint, and that gives me the radius basically of the long end of the ellipse. And then I'll type in 12 for 12 inches to get this height here. And then I'll do that again, going from this center point, but this time going up to snap to that endpoint. And now you can see we're doing it basically the opposite way. And now we'll type in 12 again. And now we have the 12 inch uh, distance here. Once this is all together, the last basic shapes that we need to create are these triangles that we see over here. Well, really, we can just create one. So I'll use my polyline and I'm going to create the base, the bottom of that triangle, and I'll make it 12 inches. Then I'll pull my mouse up and do this one 24. And then I'll just do a C for close to make my right triangle. I can use the move command to now select this triangle. Since I'm done selecting, I'll hit enter. Then I'm going to pick it from this lower right hand corner where the right angle is and that will allow me to snap it into place right here. Once I have it in place, I can use the move command again and I can go up to the modify panel to select it or if I just hit enter, it will repeat the last command. So I can select the triangle again, hit enter, and then pick a base point. I'll use that lower right hand corner again. I'll click on it, move my mouse up, and I'll move it up 
12 inches. Once I have it vertically where I'd like it, or I said where I think I'd like it, I can do a move again, select it, hit enter, pick the base point, and I could scoot it in perhaps four inches. So I get something that looks like this. Once I have that, what I can do now is use mirror to reflect this so I don't actually have to copy and rotate it or anything like that. So I will come up to the modify panel, select mirror. I will then select my triangle and hit enter. Now what I need to do is pick the first point of my mirror line. I'll use this vertical axis and then I'll pick the second point so I have a perfectly vertical line and click that. Now once you do that, it seems like it disappears, but you have to make sure to check your command line. It's asking if you'd like to erase the source object. I don't want to, and no is what's chosen here by default right now. So I'll just hit enter, and you'll see that it did a perfect mirror of that triangle. So I can do that again. This time, instead of just picking one, I'll pick both, enter. And now I'll pick this horizontal line to reflect across, enter again to keep it. And now we have all of our geometry in place. The last step is uh, to hatch in these areas, these circles and triangles. And there's different ways to do this, but the simplest way is just to use hatch and actually select the object. So I'm going to come up to my draw panel, and I want this one on top, hatch. We have many different options here in terms of patterns and gradients and things. But for this one, we just want to do a solid fill. And the difference over here is whether we're picking an internal point in a shape or an entire shape. What's the difference? If I say pick points, when I come over to my drawing, you'll see that it wants to fill in any individual area. And for certain things that works out really well, if I was trying to create a more interesting pattern here um, or something like that, that would be great. But when it comes to these circles, I get these little wedge shapes, and that's not what I'm going for right now. So what I really want to use is the select. I actually select the boundary objects. When I do that, I can actually pick the circle, and it will fill in the entire thing. So this will allow me to select each shape that I'm interested in and fill them in in one simple step. Once I'm done, I can just hit enter. And the important thing to remember with hatching is if you do them all in one single step, if I were to select any of them, you'll see that it's treated as one object and its anchor point is here in the middle. Okay, so if I hit delete, for example, it would get rid of all of it at once. If I did them separately, they would be individual objects. That's just something to keep in mind. So using a few simple techniques that we've covered so far, we've actually been able to make a rug.